Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. So today we'll see a one more concept in compiler design that is shift reduce parser. So in our previous session we have seen the top down parser and in the top down parser we have seen two parsers that is recursive descendant parser and LL1 parser. And now we are going to see a one more concept that is a shift reduce parser which comes under bottom up parser category. So this is a bottom up parser. Bottom up parser. So that means we will start from the leaf node and then we are just moving towards the start symbol. Right? And see here it will be using the leftmost derivative, sorry, rightmost derivation. So in the top down we are using a leftmost derivation now we are using rightmost derivation rightmost derivation so what are the inputs for this shift reduce parser so the input will be the context free grammar and the output will be the parse string so whatever the uh, category that means either top down approach or bottom up approach the input is same and the output will also be same that the working procedure will be different. So here the input is context free grammar and the output is parsed. The output is a parsed. So in order to convert this context free grammar to the parsed it requires a two data structures so one is input buffer input buffer or a input string and the second one is a stack second one is a stack so whereas in our previous session we have seen a LL parser where we have used three data structures that is input buffer stack and the parsing table and that parsing table is not required here so it requires only two things so input buffer and the stack so you can simply say uh, input buffer and this is a parser and this is a stack so which will produce past it okay so this will be the diagram right now what are the different actions that can be performed while doing or while converting the context free grammar to a parse string okay or uh, context free to, uh, yes context free grammar to the parse string so the actions to be taken are the first one is a shift action shift shift means shifting the symbol from input string or a input buffer to the stack okay so shifting the input symbol from input buffer to stack second one is reduce so if the top of the stack matches with any one the left hand side of any one of the production then simply replace with a non terminal so you can uh, pop that particular uh, production from the stack and replace it with the non terminal from the productions okay we will be having some productions and from the production if the top of the stack matches with the left hand side of any production simply that can be replaced with the right hand side non terminal okay and the third one is error error third one is a error okay error means if in any case the symbol can't be shifted to stack or the symbol can't be replaced or any symbol stop of the stack can't be replaced so then we can say it as an error okay so that means if the input string can't be parsed from this particular parser right so that cases we call it as an error and the fourth one all we know that is accept so if the input string 
matches or parsed the complete input string has been parsed by the parser then we can say the accept that means the top of the stack and input buffer okay having dollar only dollar okay if the top of the stack is dollar and the input buffer is having only dollar then simply we can say it is accept that means the complete input string has been passed so initially the input buffer the input buffer or input string should be appended with dollar so this is the first one we need to remember right so the input buffer or input string we want to parse so that should be appended with a dollar and the second one top of the stack sorry uh, push dollar into empty stack empty stack that means always the stack will be having dollar at the end at the bottom that will be the last element okay so these two rules we have to follow before starting the parsing technique okay so these are the things just remember so there's a bottom up parser it uses the rightmost derivation the input is a context free grammar and output is a parse tree and it uses two data structures input buffer and the stack and it will be having performing four different actions shift uh, reduce error and accept and before starting the parsing before parsing any input string we have to take care that input string should be appended with a dollar so which specifies the end of the string right and the second one push dollar into the empty stack initially we have to push dollar into the stack so that dollar will be the last element in the stack okay so now we'll see one uh, example context free grammar and let us solve that whether let us take some input string and let us see whether that input string can be parsed by using that context free grammar or not so let's move with an example so now let us take the example the context free grammar e is equal to e plus e e tends to e star e and e tends to id so you need not bother about the left recursion and left factoring okay so we have to bother about these left recursion and left factoring only when you are using the top down parsing so now we are going with the bottom up parsing you need not worry about the left factoring and left recursion so directly we can consider those uh, context free grammar and we can parse the input string now let us take a stack on one side and input string on the next element in the next side and the action to be performed so we have seen four different actions shift reduce error and accept now consider the stack it's an empty stack so what we have to do in the empty stack dollar should be pushed so initially there is a dollar and now the input string this is the input string let us consider whether this type of input string can be parsed through this particular context free grammar now i'll write the uh, input string id plus id star id and what we have to do is in the first step the, we have to append the dollar to the input string so i am appending the dollar here okay now what is the action we have to take so symbol by symbol we have to shift to the stack so the first one shift operation we are performing the shift operation that means from the input string we are just shifting one symbol towards the stack so the next will be dollar and id has been shifted to stack what is the remaining input string plus id star id dollar okay now you can see uh, check whether the top of the stack other than dollar which is available in the right hand side of the any production so he can see id and see this is the uh, lhs left hand side and this is the rhs which is a right hand side now we have to compare whether this id is in right hand side of any production yes we are having the id in the right hand side of one production so 
now what we have to do we have to reduce reduce with the production e tends to id okay now replace this id with a non terminal so the production e okay now remaining plus id star id dollar what we can do you can check whether it is available on the right hand side of any production so there is no e on the right hand side so there is e plus e and e star e but there is no single e then <coughs> excuse me again we have to perform the shift operation again plus will be move to the stack so e plus e plus so here what happens id star id dollar check whether the stack elements are having on the right hand side of the stack so there is no i mean a right hand side of any production e plus is not available e plus e is available but e plus is not available now what we have to do again you can perform the shift once again we have to perform shift operation so dollar e plus id star id dollar so you can check id okay id is available on the right hand side of any production yes we are having okay just keep aside plus and id so is there any plus and id no e plus id is there any e plus id there is no so simply reduce reduce with e tends to id so what happens here dollar e plus e star id dollar okay now you can check whether e plus e is available yes e plus e is available now what have what we have to do again we can reduce with e tends to e plus e so simply you can write it here e and star id dollar so you can check whether e is available on the right hand side of any production no so simply we can write shift operation so dollar e star and id dollar so check star is available no e star is available on the right hand side no again we have to perform shift operation so dollar e star id dollar and now you can check e star id there is not available star id no available id available so reduce with e tends to id what happens now e star e okay e star e now again it is a dollar symbol so whether check whether e star e is available or not yes e star is available here so now we can perform reduce with e tends to e star e so it becomes dollar e dollar and now you can check so uh, a, a small uh, correction so previously i have said that whether the top of the stack and the input buffer having a dollar then we can say it as an accept but a slight correction i am extremely sorry for that so if the stack is having the starting symbol if the stack is having only the starting symbol and the input string is dollar then it will be accepted okay so i am extremely sorry for the uh, that one so small correction so when the parse will be accepted means if the input string is completely parsed and only dollar is left and the stack is having only the start symbol so here the start symbol is e so then we can simply write it as accept so we can say that by using this context free grammar this particular input it can be easily parsed now we have to construct the parse tree how can we construct from bottom to top so consider from here e and e is been has been expanded with e star e so e star e okay move towards up e is e id so this is a id move towards up so e plus e e came with e plus e 
Go with the up. This is a ID. Move towards the up. E to ID. So you can say ID plus ID star ID. So only the leaf nodes. Consider only the leaf nodes. So I will round up with the leaf nodes. All the leaf nodes. A leaf nodes are nothing but terminals. Okay. Leaf nodes are the terminals which can't be expanded. Right. So here you can see ID plus ID star ID. So that is the input string we have passed. Right. So hope you understood this one. Clear? Yes. So I will give you one more example. So you have to solve this and post the result in our comment box. Okay. Yes, uh, this is the context free grammar. Uh, one more example. S yes tends to TL, T tends to int or a float, and L tends to L comma ID hyphen ID. Here comma is also a production, right? It's also a symbol. And input string you have to parse is int ID comma ID. So why we have taken the same example? Because so our programming instructions will be in this format int ID ID. That means int A comma B. So if we, if we want to declare two variables, so that will be done with the help of int, okay, some data type, integer a comma b. So here we are replacing that a comma b with the identifiers, id comma id. So the input string is int id comma id and the context free grammar is these three production rules and check out, follow the same procedure and check whether this particular input has been parsed through this context free grammar or not and result post your result in the comment section and let me know that okay right so hope you understood this one uh, if you are having any queries regarding this one feel free to post your doubts in the comment section definitely i will try to clarify all your doubts if you really enjoyed my session like my session share my session with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel thanks for watching thank you very much